marketing piece sounds really interesting too, because um, that's something pretty recent, right? You guys didn't originally start on the marketing side. We were kind of all over in the beginning. It's yeah. just like, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> like, I have no idea. Yeah, like, I know there's a problem here, but to be able to get to the right person, the issue with the marketing is there's lots of tools out there already. Mm -hmm. So even though we think about it in a very, very different way, people will ask, well, how is this different than whatever? How is this different than that? So you got to spend a lot of time explaining. It's a very different way to think about marketing communication. So that kind of people come in, they want to see it. If they want to buy it, that's great. Higher ed and internal communication, we don't have that. There isn't you know, a slew of tools that they can pick from. Nobody's really thought about them in this way. So in those two markets, this product really delivers without noise from other competitors, um, and they get the value right away. So they take a look at it and they say, this is amazing. Why would we not do this? And that's my favorite thing to hear is when you kind of explain what we do to a company or to a university and within 30 minutes I don't understand why would anyone not do this like, perfect I love you yes do this yeah it's pretty obvious um, so I want to get into uh, Cincinnati um, you you're originally from Egypt from Cairo moved here when you were four lived in Dayton um, you got your undergrad in Dayton and you got your master's at Xavier, um, and you founded three very successful companies here. How has Cincinnati been integral to your success? Um, <clears throat> well, I think a big part of it is the cost of doing business here is very low. Yeah. You know, for this size market, I think we have great relationships with the local universities. So finding talent has never been an issue and then keeping them is not an issue so because Cincinnati has all these big companies to offer a culture where it's startup and it's very quick and you have the autonomy to do what you think is right and let's go out and change the world Right? There's not that many companies in Cincinnati that think and operate that way. So when we do hire someone, they tend to stay for a long, long time. So I think it's a huge plus from the cost of doing business, from finding talent, retaining talent, and then access to customers. So because it's so small, relatively speaking, to be able to get meetings with Kroger yeah. or Proctor massive companies. It's not that hard because in Cincinnati and everybody's connected and everybody's willing to help you. So I just feel like here there's less noise than New York, San Francisco, Chicago, Boston. Like, I don't want to be anywhere else. I love it here. And the, so you, you got on, you touched on the talent and the customer piece. Um, how about the money piece, raising money? That's, you know, every entrepreneur has to do that. What's raising money like in Cincinnati? Well, I, uh, so I would argue every entrepreneur doesn't have to do that. It's raising money. That's, you know, every entrepreneur has to do that. What's raising money like in Cincinnati? Well, I, uh, so I would argue every entrepreneur doesn't. I remember a company out in San Francisco, and they had this idea for, I forget what it was, maybe it was delivering food or something. And it was years and years and years ago, and none of them were engineers. Like, yeah, this would be cool. This would, if this service existed, I would use it. So they did it all by hand. They created an online form that people submitted, hey, this is what I want. And they would get a text message and they would go grab it themselves. There was no engineering, there's no app, there was none of this. Oh, yeah. And then once they started to see there's real success here, then they went out and raised some money to build the technology to make their lives easier. But they wanted to prove there's a business. And that is the Cincinnati mindset. Cincinnati investors don't like risk you think about the people in Cincinnati, where did they get their money? So they worked at Proctor for 20 years. Proctor hates risk. That's, and they have to. They're a CPG company. You can't put out um, products that are going to kill someone. Yeah. Right? So they're very risk averse. What else do we have in Cincinnati? Financial services, huge banks, insurance companies. They hate risk. 
yeah. right? So these people have gone their entire careers in corporations that have trained them risk is bad. So now they've got all this money and they're looking at these startups and they view them as risky. So if you come to a Cincinnati investor, now again, I'm stereotyping, yeah. generalizing, and you say, and it's not just Cincinnati, it's pretty much the Midwest, but if you come to them and say, I've got this great idea, it's gonna be awesome, whatever, whatever, they're gonna be like, that's cute. Come back to me when you've got traction and you've got customers and you're growing. Yeah, That's where Cincinnati investors really can help you. Like you've done all the hard work. You've shown there's a business here. You've shown you can solve problems. You've shown that you provide value. And now you need money to grow faster. That's what they love. You've eliminated a lot of the risk. And so they see all the upside from the growth and they, you've taken away the downside. Cincinnati's great at that. Like that, you'll get money all the time. That's not hard to do. But if you come in as an entrepreneur and you say, I've got this idea, I'm in Cincinnati, and I just want to go raise a million bucks. The reality is that is not going to happen or easily. It's going to be a lot of work. And it also depends on what you're trying to do. So are you trying to build a brand here? Like that's not gonna work. Are you trying to build something where it goes to the consumer? That's also difficult. So the analogy I like to give is that you're not gonna grow pineapples in Cincinnati. The soil and the climate is not conducive to that. Well, like building the next Twitter or Facebook or whatever, that's a pineapple here. It doesn't work here. It's not going to grow here. It's not a thing. Yeah. Or it would be really difficult to make it happen. That's not to say you can't grow things here. So again, I think the things that do really well here are business to business, enterprise, because that's our climate. You have access to all these big companies right in your backyard, and they're easy to get to. That's our soil, and it's low cost of doing business. So just like I would say, hey, if you're gonna grow pineapples, go to Hawaii or go out west. That's not right here. So I think Cincinnati's great for certain types of crops. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's not for everything. What is something you can tell kids that have entrepreneurial inspirations but might not have the funds and resources to pursue? Again, I don't think you need funds. I think it is, there's a lot you can do if you just really think about the problem all the time. So I think that's a common misconception. You have to have money to do anything. Like, no, there's a ton of businesses that never raised money. Look at MailChimp. They've raised zero, ever. And they're massive. And there's lots of other examples like this where the company has never raised any money. These people just started with an idea and they just built. The, myth, the, the real misconception is why you need funds and resources is because people want you to feel like you're in a race. Like there's a deadline. Like you, if you're not successful in 12 months, why are you doing this? That's not realistic. And so if you remove that constraint and you say, you know what, you're just passionate about solving this problem. Who cares when you solve it, whether it's 12 months from now or 10 years from now, why would that matter to you? Isn't that what you're really trying to do is change the world in a better way? Who says 12 months, where'd that come from? It's just made up, it's arbitrary. So when you start removing this as part of being an entrepreneur, yeah. you say, just go at your own pace. Just do what you love. It's not about making money. It's about changing the world. And it's like, oh, yeah, I, don't, I, can, I can get a long way without ever raising anything. And then when you do need money and you've shown growth and you've shown traction, it's easier to get. Put yourself in a way better position. So I say just uh, eliminate that and know that there's a lot of resources here to help you get started. There's Everybody's willing to help. You reach out pretty much to anyone in this ecosystem and say, hey, can we grab coffee? They will almost all say yes. Less than 1% of the African-American entrepreneurs acquire investments. Uh, being an Egyptian-American, what is your take on this? And uh, 
Where do we start to increase minority entrepreneurship and investment? So I have a very unpopular opinion about this. Yeah. Like raising money is hard. It doesn't matter what color you are. Yeah. It doesn't matter what gender you are. None of that matters. Yeah. People, listen, people are investing their money for a return. So if you've got a good idea, they don't care what you look like. None of that matters. So I say if you want more minorities starting companies, you need to go back to school. Meaning, why aren't we in middle school and high school and putting up examples that they can see, right? African American or female founders, business owners that have been successful, putting them up on stage so these kids can see that could be you. They don't see that. That's the fundamental problem. They don't even know that this is an option for them. So you've got less people coming in. So the reason you've got less people getting investment, you've got less people asking, right? It's, it's a smaller pie. So what if you could put good examples and role models on stage and say, and them saying, I thought, I never knew I could do this. Nobody in my family was ever an entrepreneur. But I'm here to tell you that all of you can do this. Give me more role models. If you're a female and you never see a female business owner, why would you think you can do that? It's not even in their mindset. If your parents aren't business owners, your mom's not a business owner, and you don't have anyone in your family that's a business owner and you're a female, why would you think you're capable of doing that? It's not anywhere on their radar. So the more we as a society can show them, this could be you. Right? It's not just celebrities and rappers and movie yeah. stars. It's, it's all bullshit. 